If you've ever watched a, a great sprinter, it's almost effortless. It seems like the guy who wins the race is still bouncy after the race. Whereas the person who lost the race tried really, really hard. It seemed like he tried harder and lost than the winner tried and won. And a lot of times slower people are much more muscular when they run. So I think that really guides our training. If it's a electrical and elastic, um, the weight room has its place, but it's, it's probably number three on the list. And to train the nervous system and elasticity, we must train when you're fresh. And I, I, think, I think you and I uh, have both seen just terrible situations of, of, of people that, that they run a lot. You know, and they, and, and of course we worship hard work and high effort. You know, if, if a matter of fact, at a clinic I'm speaking at in two weeks, I'm going to ask how many of you are big fans of hard work and high effort and everybody will raise their hand because that's the way we were brought up. It's like, you know, are, are you a good person? Yes, yes, I am. You know, and, and, uh, but those are not key things in sprinting. We have to perform when we sprint. Sprinting is the most extreme thing the human body can do physically. There's nothing like running at top speed. You know, like for my track kids, there's nothing like running 23 miles an hour. There's nothing in their life that comes close. And so we have to train that when they're fresh. And then we must have huge amounts of recovery. And we can't sprint every day. We, uh, but as you said in your article uh, that I just read this morning, um, sprinting once a week isn't enough either. So I, I believe the sweet spot is about three times a week. And would, would you say that for soccer players who are in the year round grind? Because that's, that's the battle we're all fighting right now. And I would love to sprint three times a week with them, but it's just like, they're playing two games on the weekend, sometimes three games on the weekend. And then you got like three to four practices a week where they're probably clocking like 10 miles of running. <laughs> yes. So yes. I know your thoughts on early specialization. I agree with them, but what do you say about in-season sprinting? Yeah, that's a, a great question. And I don't know if there's a great answer because uh, first of all, I think we need to address the idea that more isn't always better. And I, I think as parents, um, you know, families aren't as big as they used to be. Um, you know, I grew up in a family of four. I had four kids myself. And you can't put as much into four kids individually as you can one or two. And so parents put so much into their kids and they invest in their kids. And, and so if they can, you know, sign them up for a 12-month, you know, 365-day-a-year soccer program, for a thousand a month, man, that sounds like a great idea. They're going to win a college scholarship by doing that. And what happens, as you know, they get injured, they get burned out. Um, they don't even like soccer by the time they're 15. I see it all the time um, where I mean, I have kids on my track team for like the first time who, who came from the soccer team. I say, you like soccer? He goes, no, I played it all my life and I hate it now. <laughs> and, and we have to be really careful about that. So so getting back to your idea um, uh, that in-season sprint training, I did develop something, I put it out on YouTube called the Atomic Workout, where I tried to say, what would be the very minimum that we could do and basically get faster? And, and so the, the minimum is basically do, you do 10 speed drills as well as you can in 10 minutes, which means you're doing something for five seconds and resting for 55. You know, so 10 speed drills in 10 minutes, and then you, you time two sprints with free lap. And obviously when you time a sprint,